I met him at a biker bar in Phoenix, Arizona. He looked like kind of like a twacked out Jason Mraz. He was wearing like a fedora and had like really nice chiseled jaw. You go to biker bars a lot? I have a thing for leather and studs, so okay. yeah, I do like a biker bar. He approached me, actually this very old biker was uh, like touching my leg and commenting on how smooth my legs were. And were they indeed good smooth legs? No, I had shaved that day, so it was an accurate compliment, but uh, it was just this really old man and this like uh, Jason Mraz looking type who didn't look like a biker at all, so he didn't look like he belonged there, like I said, fedora. Uh, came up and he told the old man, who looked a bit like Willie Nelson, if we're gonna like compare singers. He invited me oh, back to his place to uh, like do some drugs. Yeah. What drugs did he want to give you? He wanted to give me cocaine, but as it turned out, when I looked at it later, it was not cocaine. I know my cocaine. And what was it? It was meth. I said no. Um, we exchanged numbers. Uh, we uh, didn't do the meth. And then he said. Um, Can I ask you real quick? So once you saw that he had meth. You still wanted to hang out with him later, though. Why? Well, it was like he told me this sob story about his life. He read me this eulogy that he gave at a friend's a funeral, like, years back. And, like, he teared up during the eulogy. So I teared up, and I told him about a friend of mine that had died. And we, like, got, had this, like, heart-to-heart. -heart. Um, and then he said, you know, I would really love to take you out. Okay. Uh, when's the last time you went for, like, a nice steak dinner? And he told me some, like anecdote about the steak place and I was like I've never been there I wanted to go there he said just the thing could you give me a ride to court tomorrow he wanted me to drive his car to court because in case he um he didn't explain this fully at the time but as like things panned out he was afraid that he was going to be taken to jail that day and needed someone to like hold on to his car while he was in jail if he went to jail he, he called me an uber to where he was staying which he said was his house but i don't think it was as it turns out um no kidding yeah in the uber that he called me he called me and asked me if i could pick him up um a handle of vodka like on my way there and he said it was for his roommate but like at 11 in the morning at 11 in the morning he needed vodka for his roommate when he was when we were supposed to be going to court together okay. and he's like pacing back and forth and sweating because i think he did all the meth i go there he's clearly drunk and like on drugs and so then i'm kind of like getting dubious of this at the time yeah you know this is just the first red flag yeah yeah <laughs> yeah but anyway, uh, we go to court. I thought it was a civil traffic violation. Um, and then I didn't understand why he had a lawyer, but then the lawyer approaches us and he looks at me and he says, is this her? And the lawyer asked me if I had any gum because he reeked of alcohol. And then I overhear in domestic violence cases, the situation, blah, blah, blah. The lawyer says that. And so my, so to me, that's the first red flag. I really kind of was... Uh, it wasn't the meth the night no, before. No, 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 no. You have no idea the type of people I come across, but or who come across me. But, um, yeah, so I hear domestic violence, and I ask him, I'm like, are, are you here because you, like, beat a bitch up or something? But as it turns out, he was there because he and this woman that he had been... Um, engaged to, I guess, got in a fight over their dog. I think the case ended up getting dropped because they couldn't get in touch with the woman or something. Okay. But anyway, uh, after that, I was promised like a steak dinner, right? We didn't end up doing that. We went to like a sports bar and we ordered chili. The day just like dragged on and on. Like I kept waiting and waiting for the steak dinner to like happen and th like different errands kept coming up. Like the dog that they fought over, he had to like go pick up the dog, I guess. I told my friend who had been in the biker bar with me that night, we were playing pool. I was like, yeah, I went out with that Jason Mraz look like and, and this is what ended up happening. He was like, yo, are you talking about the guy who has herpes? He was like, oh no, that's just some dumb joke I make about my mustache. He has a mustache. He's like, I grow the mustache to hide herpes, is what he says, but it's a joke. And I was like, why would you ever joke about having herpes? So we go back into this place where he's staying to drop off the dog, and he like sits down with his dog and is like playing with his dog and falls asleep on the couch. And so then I just Ubered home. Oh, is so it no sexy time? No, no, there was like a weird moment uh, in the parking lot. I think it was after the meth, but before the domestic violence court appearance, where like we made out in the parking lot a little bit, which was why I was concerned about the herpes. Um, yeah, but no, there was, and there might have been like a little over the pants hand job, but other than that, like there was no like real sexy time.